I mean, first of all, give us a sense of how the pandemic impacted your production, your your facilities, and where are you now that resumption has uh, has resumed? Yeah, it's great to be here. Um, I'm, I'm currently in China, and uh, our facility um, are all back uh, to normal operations. And during the January, February, it was really, really tough. Yeah. Give us a sense of what's back to normal. Are you back to 100% in terms of production, your manufacturing of output? Where are you now? Yeah, we are back to 100%. Um, uh, nine, more than 99% of our staff are working already, and our three sites, Shanghai, Suzhou, and Wuxi City, are all 100% are working. And we're actually going to be uh, doing some overtime in starting this month to catch up some of the uh, work that we couldn't do in February. So this is make sure um, we, we have uh, uh, plenty of capacity to support some of the programs you just mentioned. Uh, for example, we are working on more than 10 uh, treatment programs. Those are neutralization antibodies to potentially treat and even eventually maybe even pre prevent uh, diseases like uh, COVID-19. And so we, we have an additional couple of programs where can manage the symptoms of the disease, or, uh, uh, like a cytokine storm. We, uh, in addition to that, we are also uh, negotiating on two potential contracts to work on vaccines. So uh, our efforts on preventing or on treating the, um, uh, uh, our efforts in preventing the pandemic or treating the disease are uh, including three aspects, neutralization antibodies and some of the biologic drugs that prevent the symptoms, treat the symptoms, and also uh, potential vaccines to prevent the disease. Chris, so tell me, which one of those three are you most confident in coming up with a solution? And the second part of my question would be, where, how far away do you think you are from achieving something in those three areas that you mentioned? Oh, that's a, that's a million dollar question. That's also a great question. So I, I would let, let the science lead. Um, so far, we are, um, we, we've seen uh, very exciting data on neutralization antibodies. As I said earlier, we have more than 10 programs right now. And we hope to have a program as early as August in patients. And then by end of this year, we may have 10 programs in the clinic. Essentially, uh, you know, you hopefully this, some of those will be really successful and become a potential treatment for uh, COVID-19. I think the antibody seems will be the first wave, and some of the programs that I mentioned manage the symptoms, like the cytokine storm. Those, those programs are already in the clinic, and those, those uh, you know, they, they they are not able to cure the patient, but they may help the critically ill patients, the patients who are in ICU. And lastly, the vaccines are absolutely need to have. Um, because they, in the long term, uh, if, if the pandemic uh, unfortunately um, uh, uh, lasts until next year or the year after, and then the vaccine is absolutely uh, must is a must have. So Wuxi Biology is working on all three fronts: uh, a near term treatment, managing the symptoms, and also long term, hopefully a, a, a prevention uh, of the disease. So, so Chris, that, that brings me on nicely to just ask you about what are the scientists telling you about the biggest challenge? when they confront this disease, what is it? What's making it so difficult for all these companies to try and come up with something which can cure it, perhaps also perhaps prevent it, and as you say, also uh, deal with the symptoms? This, this virus seems to be a little more elusive. Um, so the more we understand the virus better, the, the, um, the better we are in a position to hopefully find a cure or a prevention, a vaccine to prevent the disease. But right now, the, you know, every day we're learning something new about the virus, about the structure of the virus, about uh, the sort of uh, the uh, potential uh, tr uh, antibody treatments. For example, we have seen antibodies that bind, and to, this is very technical, so antibodies that bind to virus, but uh, it behaved very well in the studio virus assay, it was in a lab setting, but didn't, did not do well at all in the live virus challenge. So every day we're learning something new about the virus. But globally, I'm, I'm glad to see there are so many efforts right now trying to find a, a, a neutralization antibody or a vaccine or other programs that can potentially uh, treat the disease is absolutely needed. Chris, as you ramp up your operation, uh, are you looking to maybe invest more in R&D? Are you looking to hire more? Are there plans over the next 12 months? Yes, um, as, as the, uh, so as China is, is the first wave to sort of uh, hopefully win over the, the, the COVID-19 already, we feel like we have more responsibility to help the global community. In, in this case, that's why uh, we have so many programs ongoing. Right? 
So that's why we are actually ramping up our operations. We plan to add another 1,000 scientists this year. So currently, on the COVID-19 efforts alone, we have more than 500 people already working on it. And if, uh, if there's a need to uh, mass produce, so end of this year, we may have 1,000 people, 1,000 scientists, engineers, engineers working on, on you know, potential cures or treatment for those diseases. How do you see the coronavirus shaping China's future healthcare system? It's a great question. I think, uh, I think uh, through this crisis, now uh, every government, uh, including China, recognize how important it is in the healthcare industry, right? how important it is to, um, to, to, to ensure that the, the, the science, uh, 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 investing, investing in science on the, on the line to understand the disease, the underlying mechanism of the disease. I think um, uh, the global community seems to have a very short memory. I think uh, people forgot about SARS uh, after, you know, after seven, 17 years, it can, another virus come back. So hopefully this time, you know, the, the, the com global community will continue to invest, even after this pandemic, continue to invest in um, uh, different treatment programs, antibodies, you know, proteins, small molecule drugs, and vaccines, so that we're prepared you know, for the next, uh, next time it hits.